Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph. As you can see behind me, I have chosen uh, basically the uh, Bonner Elementary School parking lot as my backdrop for today. I took this picture on my way out of a Monday night's meeting that was hosted just this past Monday. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fool for a little bit of fog, so I really like just the aesthetic of this look for sure. So anyways, that's kind of how we're going to start off this morning a little bit. It's been cold out there the last couple days. It's been kind of like just kind of frigid and cold out there. Not so much with the snow, but just with a lot of different things going on as well. So um, like I said last week, I'm not going to start off with some new stuff. I'm going to actually save that for much later in the show as I'm um, changing up the kind of like the, uh, the arrangement of this. So we're going to talk about some news coming out of Monday night's meeting. MCAT did some adjustments to the cameras and we were back into our full-fledged uh, robotic cameras there. Um, um, we got our own little Mr. Fix-It, uh, James Wassum, and he got those cameras going. He was basically instrumental in basically allowing us to do uh, a lot of those live streams that you guys enjoy, enjoy from MCAT um, as we currently do them for a lot of organizations trying to uh, get the word out on uh, things, lectures, and all sorts of different causes. If you want to learn more, you can go to MCAT.org. Let's walk right into some city council. Uh, and this is something I don't usually do for the beginning of it, but I th always thought this was a, an interesting kind of a quote that always like uh, that, that always comes up every couple of years. Uh, this is Dan Wally. He's a resident. He calls out city council members uh, for not uh, standing during the pledge. And so some of the uh, city council members have not stood during the Pledge of Allegiance. And so this is uh, Mr. Wally. I'm here to address the people that choose to sit for the Pledge of Allegiance. If I choose to pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, that's the answer, with liberty and justice for all. If, if you can't stand for God and country, what do you stand for? So, you're an embarrassment to yourself and the great state of Montana. To the rest of the council, Thank you for your service. I appreciate your time, your dedication, and the time away from your family. I truly thank you for very much. Okay. And so that was the uh, a nice way to kick off the city council meeting uh, public comment section. Um, we usually don't see many complaints along those fields, and I wanted to highlight that as a talking point in the American freedom allows us to sit down during the pledge. And some people's freedoms can can make people uncomfortable, but they're well within their rights uh, to not participate. And that's just my opinion on that matter. It's you know the land of the free. You can you don't you should not get in trouble for not doing something. Think about it. Okay, Brandon Work, teacher who identifies as an Arab American, uh, spoke uh, about a, uh, support for a ceasefire in the Israeli Hamas war, and so uh, this is what he had to say. You might have seen what happened recently with the menorah and the county commissioners and decided to stay out of controversy. I understand that position. Nor should any political stance taken by this body be seen to endanger Missoula's Jewish or Arab communities. I will just say that many citizens like myself and a few to speak after me continue to be disappointed that the institutions that decide foreign policy do not represent us and the institutions that do represent us do not touch foreign policy. We are looking for an elected body to represent what we know is a mainstream position, routinely polling over 60% of the general American public, including majority support of both major parties, and supported by every major country on earth. I hope that this council, made of decent and empathetic people, will do what others cannot. Thank you. Okay. And so for the most part, a lot of the American sentiment towards the ceasefire has to do with, we just don't want to see any more war. That's just it, we know. We have the, uh, um, our finger on the pulse when it comes to the uh, Israeli influences to uh, how they uh, work with the, uh, um, the Gaza and the people in Palestine. I'm sorry, he, uh, he spoke last month in regards to the same issues with updates on current events happening in Gaza and we know more today uh, that, uh, that what he had reported on Monday. Uh, many uh, political in, uh, entities have dealt with the backlash in higher uh, public, pol uh, political offices with the Palestinian American House Representative Rashida Taib uh, being silenced for her views on this topic. They literally voted to have her uh, um, 
quieted on the House floor. So it's it's getting kind of crazy out there in the world of politics. And Robbie Lieben, who is a, jur- a, a Jewish resident Jewish resident in the uh, city of Missoula, uh, is also in support of a ceasefire. And this is what he had to say about separating a people from a government. So my dearest relatives live in Israel, and I want what's best for them. Tonight is the fifth night of Hanukkah, a holiday about resisting a siege against innocent Jews in biblical times. How ironic it is that in 2023, Israel is the country laying siege, this time to innocent Palestinians. I grew up with a mantra, never again, meaning we will never allow genocide. And when we say never again, we mean never again for anyone, not just never again for Jews. Ethnic cleansing is not a Jewish value. Attempting to stop it is not anti-Semitism. It is certainly not in my cousin's best interest to commit ethnic cleansing. And criticizing the actions of the state of Israel is not anti-Semitic. It is no different from criticizing any other government. I'm guessing some of you might be concerned about being called anti-Semites if you vote for such a resolution. And those of us here tonight who are Jewish are here to say that we support you. We will stand with you. Stopping ethnic cleansing takes courage. There are some who will indeed call you anti-Semites, and we are here to help you take action and to assuage any doubts that you may have. In some, place, in some spaces nowadays, it has become popular to give a native land acknowledgement before each event, acknowledging that we are on land here, right now, that was stolen from the Salish people. If Americans had attempted to have a ceasefire before the United States ethnically cleansed Montana, this would still be Salish land. We would have prevented a genocide rather than simply memorializing it a century and a half later. We have the opportunity now. We can prevent ethnic cleansing in Palestine. The very first step is to stop the bombs, stop the tanks, cease the fire. I don't want my cousin's descendants a century and a half from now to hold Palestinian land acknowledgments commemorating those people that Israel is exterminating right now. An immediate ceasefire is imperative. All right, and so that was uh, Robbie Lieben. Another top, uh, and so this was like there was a big group of people that came into support of the ceasefire on that particular uh, city council meeting to move forward on this as well. And you know, like most meetings, a lot of times those topics kind of just jump around to the next one, and there's not much uh, transition to the next topic. Which we're going to a Northwestern Energy line that they want to build underground uh, for electrical infrastructure. Danner Carlino uh, takes a stand against uh, Northwestern Energy in this regard. And this is what he had to say. I'm not in any way going to help grant anything that has to do with Northwestern Energy creating more major fossil fuel infrastructure. Um, we're in a climate crisis where natural disasters are happening at unpre- unprecedented rates um, with increased intensity. Um, millions of people across the world are having to face the consequences of our climate crisis. And we're experiencing a, um, a sixth mass extinction where we're expecting to see um, the vast majority of life on Earth go extinct if we continue with what we're doing right now. And Northwestern Energy has a plan to double their energy production by building four new gas plants in Montana, fracked gas plants. And their plan for the next 20 years is to increase our greenhouse gas emissions coming out of Northwestern Energy. This is a plan that's going to cause mass extinction, that's going to cause millions of, of deaths across the world. and. It's something that we should take no part in. All right. So that was Daniel Colino talking a little bit more about that. Uh, Mike Nugent, also on city council, uh, uh, rebucks um, Daniel Colino's claim while also mentioning the fact that this is something that uh, would benefit the community, especially uh, building up the infrastructure during the uh, winter times in here in the city of Missoula. I believe that we need to tackle climate change and we need to encourage adaptive um, reuse of houses and, and <clears throat> retrofitting and all of those good things. I also believe people should be able to heat their houses in the winter, and I would venture to guess 80% of the homes in Missoula are heated by natural gas in some way, shape, or form, and so we can't just block a pipeline and say, oh, this is going to take care of all our problems without acknowledging that um, people actually use that to heat their houses. So before we cut off the source, we need to have solutions that make sense for people. 
And that's one of the big things living in a place like Montana, especially if you're living in eastern parts of Montana that are not protected by the Rocky Mountains, which creates the inversion. So our winters here aren't as intense as eastern Montana, in which a lot of these uh, big uh, production farms and you know solar farms and also thing, um, um, wind farms could really thrive. But then at the same time, is this, we have to understand that winter, our infrastructure is built to withstand a good amount of winter, but not every but not forever you know how that you know how that works where it's you know we're kind of dealing with an, uh, an aging system on just across the board everywhere in the united states um one of the biggest pushes for modernization in the united states was a post-world war ii era in which we saw a lot more growth and stuff like that I, i'm going into that kind of like big picture type stuff as well but this is just one of those things that is like you cannot um just quickly change everything without looking into the potential consequences of not powering and not being able to heat your homes. And I think that's one of the things that, um, one, that was one of the arguments for fossil fuels and, it's, and natural gas and all that kind of stuff is that they are like the, uh, the go-to when it comes to heating homes and all that kind of stuff in a better way to uh, deviate some of the electrical costs of energy. And so that's what they ended up doing. But realistically, depending on coal, natural gas is not the best but until solar, wind, and other renewable uh, renewals can address the winter months, then we're kind of stuck with this easy, uh, it's not as easy as just flipping a switch. So um, actually for not for lack of trying, because we are actually in a uh, um, transitional period in the, during the public hearing today, they actually did talk about a green power deal with Northwestern Energy. And so that other thing was more just like uh, part of the, uh, uh, just one of, one of the many infrastructure projects that they do within the city. It's just one, one thing after, you know, there's always some new project coming up, but this one is a little bit more about creating uh, the non-binding document that uh, memor um, memorializes the intent and general understanding between Northwestern Energy and uh, lead uh, communities for development of green power programs. Uh, Evora Glenn, uh, with this presentation, talks a little bit more about this process. The Green Power Program is the same program that you may have heard called the Renewable Rate Option or a Green Tariff, same program. And the term sheet is a foundational document that outlines the guiding principles, the program design, and the program implementation. As we discuss the Green Power Program and the term sheet tonight, we will frequently be referencing our partnerships. So this is a collaborative effort between the city of Missoula, Missoula County, the city of Bozeman, and Northwestern Energy. And so there's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of motion going on in this particular program, and you know it's it, the clip notes that th this also refers to older committee uh, meeting that highlighted the green tariffs and created an incentive collaboration with Northwestern Energy to transition to a greener power company. They got in principle of this new utility scale uh, renewable energy. Uh, accessibility and attractive, no impact for non-participants. Overall, the city county is looking for investments like the county jail, which have solar panels on the roof to offset the electricity costs on the buildings that require a ton of energy to create pathways to easy access for folks going green. And so this is not just about Northwest Energy in the city of Missoula. This is about you as an individual who wants to contribute to the gr going green and that thing moving forward as well. And so Cindy Fang, Northwest Energy VP of Regulatory Affairs, talks more about their company's stance on moving forward with this partnership. And I just want to express my gratitude for the opportunity to have been able to work collaboratively with um, Evora and Caroline. They've been absolutely wonderful. And I can't tell you how excited I am to be here today um, with this term sheet for this program and can't wait, you know, pending approval, um, can't wait to continue the partnership and in the next steps to move this program forward. Yep. And in many ways, you know, they, uh, the Northwest Energy is just like a utility. They, they want to make money. They want to, I mean, utility companies are very kind of weird in general because they're not necessarily meant for profit as they are to kind of create a business model that would basically pay their wages while at the same time uh, allow them to invest in more areas to expand because they are, they are a essential backbone in creating communities 
in across towns and cities and everything like that, not just for infrastructure improvements, but just like actually putting down power lines so people can actually have power for their homes. So it's it's kind of crazy to think a lot of this stuff is going on as well. But Brian Von Losberg, former city council member and huge advocate for green energy, uh, speaks on this matter as well. For years, council and the commissioners have listened to and worked with the community in this challenging area and have collaborated to set explicit and ambitious goals. I know a thing or two about that work and those goals. Secondly, a viable green power program is a substantial tool. It's a difference maker. It moves the needle in a meaningful way. Alone, it's not enough to meet our goals, but it's an important tool alongside many other efforts, such as the solar arrays at the wastewater plant and the county detention center and other efforts. Elephants are eaten one bite at a time, and this is a big, perhaps delicious bite. Finally, the bottom line, a successful program will bring new renewable energy onto the grid at scale that would otherwise not come online but for this effort. This is one part of what a clean energy transition looks like. All right. And so just to kind of uh, tack on a little bit more about this uh, program as well is that this week, uh, COP28 in, uh, met in Dubai and they were about talking about the climate change and all that kind of stuff. And uh, big news from there was that they've all kind of agreed to uh, uh, scale back fossil fuel in general moving forward just because uh, with all the record heat and all that kind of stuff happening in those places, especially countries like Dubai, which is uh, you're essentially building a big city in the mid middle of a desert that's only getting hotter because of this. And so that's, you know, of course, I will end this topic there. And, you know, this item will be voted on next Monday under final consideration, but it seems like all the partners are moving forward with this kind of stuff. And just kind of go back and going back to some of the things that uh, Daniel Carlino said, like, I understand where he's coming from. Is that you want to be able to uh, change to green energy tomorrow, just like right that boom, right then there. But unrealistically, we've built a grid and a system in place which requires fossil fuels and natural gas and energy, part of the grid. And now we have uh, a real uh, realistic options to with solar and wind energy and alternative green energy that essentially could help in the long run. Um, but at the same time, it's, it does take a concerted amount of effort and money to actually move forward with that and part of the all these green initiatives and all this kind of stuff, money um, and investments, and that's why the city and them um, and North Orange Energy have made this partnership. And I'm going to harken back also to the Missoula County Jail, which has you know one of the bigger arrays of solar power on the roof that helps power this 24/7 detention center. And part of that was they made a deal with uh, solar companies, North Orange Energy, and so essentially they are renting. It's, it's like a lease to own kind of thing with the solar panels. It's kind of kooky what they're doing with that, but they have like a 20 year um, regular payment plan. But then when that 20 years are up, essentially they will own the solar panels that are on the roof, which essentially would go into the uh, payment plan. So they made a pretty good deal on that as well moving forward. I don't know the complete details, but that's f what I was led to believe about the, uh, the county detention center when I took the tour a couple years ago. So um, one of the things um, that also is kind of been a back and forth between people and people who are just like, oh, isn't the JEDI program a waste of money? And so essentially what the city of Missoula did with this JEDI program, because Missoula is not as diverse as you might think, um, but one of the things about the JEDI program in, the, in general was they're looking to economic equity. So, you know, you have people who live, imagine, you know, you have different scales of people trailers, apartments, renters to owners and that kind of stuff, depending upon, you know, like, you know, what people's economic, um, you know, impact to the tax system and all that stuff, blah, 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 all word salad. But, you know, Frankie Lewis from a route policy research uh, spoke about this presentation and how it will help fund affordable housing solutions moving forward. And so this is kind of a deal to um, create a five year strategic plan to present to uh, uh, U.S. Department of, what is that, U.S. Department of um, Housing uh, and through the HUD program as well. So this is what uh, he had to say about some of the research and uh, the benefits. Um, for the HUD funding that the city receives, um, the, the that funding is targeted to households earning uh, less than 80% of area median income. So the following, the graphic up on the up on the screen uh, represents a two-person household in Missoula. That's the average household size according to 2022 one-year ACS data. Um, and I'll uh, bring your attention to the housing programs down at the bottom. 
Um, we have the HUD programs um, and then other city programs. And this is just to reinforce that um, HUD funding um, is targeted at, at those populations making 80% um, or less of area median income. And this kind of goes back to the Trinity Departments, which also utilizes a lot of this uh, federal funding to help um, alleviate costs of living for folks looking to get into affordable housing, while also they're transitioning to a better economic, uh, I guess, economic status, so they can move on to the next level and move on and go on and from there. And for the most part, I think Missoula is doing a good job in terms of filling in a lot of those gaps. And what they did with the Scott Street project, which is going to be on the north side, is the concept of the city owning the property. I believe it was like 13 acres and then developing that site. And then essentially people would buy the houses. And then once the houses were bought, they would own the land around it. So it's a lease to own kind of property situation that they're trying to help fill in some of those gaps for some people who qualify for those 60 to 80 percent, the average uh, median income. And that's usually and that's usually uh, reserved for uh, two family, two person household kind of thing. So, you know, start a house for families and kind of stuff. So that's what is geared towards a little bit more than just like uh, this, you know, the, the bachelor who wants to get a house and whatnot. So I don't know what uh, what the scale specifically is, but they just want to make sure that uh, um, the right people are moving to these right places. And yeah, so I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So that's what the point of the equity program is to help bolster uh, some of the people who need the extra help more than others economically wise. So mind you, this was a federal funds that bolstered these programs, taxpayers uh, nonetheless, but still being used to attack the issue from the housing and rental stock in the vein of affordable housing that I've said already, but it bears repeating. Not many organizations benefit uh, the individual as opposed to creating the infrastructure to retain the individual. If you are someone looking to save money on rent and utilities, I suggest you use United Way of Missoula Housing Solution Fund. And this is a great, awesome fund for people who are just like, oh man, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be able to afford it this month. I, 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 and the United Way of Missoula can give you that extra uh, uh, change or help you actually move into a place. And so they have money reserved just for helping the individual to pay the rent essentially. So, and then Human Resource Council, we're going to the Human Resource Council of Missoula, they also have a utilities page. And so if you have high utility bills, especially during the winter, it's going to get pretty cold, not to mention, you know, your electricity costs and gas and all that kind of stuff kind of goes up. And so Human Resource Council through their website also has services to help pay that kind of stuff. Other than that, if you're a senior on a fixed income and you haven't uh, used the uh, uh, Montana Department of Revenue, there are a lot of options in there to help you with your property taxes. I'm going to repeat that. There's a lot of things that can help you with property taxes if you're on a fixed income and you uh, qualify for this kind of stuff as well if you're you know, like 65 and older, that kind of thing. But still, the whole purpose is like you won't know until you try and Montana Department of Revenue has breaks for seniors who are looking to um, save some money through this tax season because taxes are going to get, taxes are hitting us hard and I just got my pro property tax live. I'm like, ugh, ugh, that's terrible. But you know, that's just the way it is. Uh, I'm an escrow, so I'm, I'm, I, I feel a little bit easier than people would be on a fixed income. But regardless of that, let's move on to the next thing. Um, up next, we have do have a committee meeting. I only have one more clip for you guys for this part of my as a city council report, and this is through the Climate Conservation and Parks, and they spoke further about the Northside Pedestrian Bridge. And so one thing is that there's a lot of money going into this pedestrian bridge, uh, and there seems to be just getting more and more money throwing at this problem. And, and so just the, kind of the background of the Northside Bridge is it's the little uh, uh, pedestrian bike bridge that goes over uh, the railroad tracks, and it connects the north side to the downtown area and it's been closed for a couple of years now because the infrastructure was terrible and it lasted for about 20, 24 years and David Selvig in past meetings have mentioned that um, if the foundation was made with concrete, then it would have lasted the 40, 50 years that they said it was going to last. But now they have to deal with the uh, fairly failing system um, along the way. And so this is what he had to say uh, about this particular project and its current timeline. We're still on task despite this change order we're still on budget and still on t on task to complete this project and reopen in july uh most important thing um uh, we uh, our challenges um we lost approximately 66 days of good weather time uh from the time we signed the contract to the time that we secured uh, uh 
BNSF uh, railroad approvals. Um, that's requiring us to re uh, configure how how Jackson is approaching this project, um, and it also triggers um, winter provisions. Um, and those are slowing the pace, uh, but uh, it is um, something that we can recover with spring. Uh, good weather here, we can get to some of the more sensitive things like tr treating here. Um, and so far, the uh, city of Missoula have earmarked uh, upwards of uh, $800,000 for this project. And this particular uh, update uh, added the additional $300,000 to this project in which they hope to uh, open by July of next year. So there's some good news, but also there's a ticket price to moving this forward. And so the Missoula Current rec uh, uh, reported that the costs have accumulated, accumulated to about $2.7 million for this project that connects the north side with the downtown area. There was some small nitpicking by council, but nothing that merited a quote for your viewing. Uh, this was a, this was a uh, sliver of the meeting that devoted itself to green energy presentations that continued from my Monday night's report, um, meeting with Northwestern Energy, deal with the pursuit of green energy for the city of Missoula. So, um, yeah, and those are the, some of the uh, uh, things happening within the city of Missoula. I did, wow, I, I did, I took a big chunk out of my show <laughs> in the beginning. I got to uh, figure out how to be a little bit more streamlined with a lot of this stuff. So, um, I'm going to actually throw it over to uh, some of the uh, new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT and also we're going to be continuing promoting our Winter Days Camp, which is happening um, in essentially uh, th uh, two and a half weeks. So without further ado, here is another promo for all the stuff that's happening on MCAT. But don't cats like mice? I totally didn't do it. Winter Blues got you down. MCAT is back once again with Winter Days. Stop motion, movie making, and more with a seasonal camp. Winter Days is three days of fun from December 27th to the 29th, starting at 10 a.m. Stay cool, Missoula. And I'd realized what I'd been doing through this process was reconnecting to the world the way my ancestors did. And that it was the lack of that community, my best hope to relearn what it means to be Anishinaabe after having it beaten and tortured out of our, my ancestors as children. The only way I could do that is to go out on the land and listen to the voices that were talking to them all along. And we, they should have a panel. We should have a panel next year of people who gave up. Um, maybe I'll be on that panel next year. <laughs> but, but I think the important thing is, is like it is, it is like, it is a marathon. It is a creative marathon, and you know, some miles are better than others. But ideally, you got someone at your side who you can kind of commiserate with.
All right, so those are some of the programs you guys can enjoy going into the weekend. They are all available on our YouTube page and also uh, the Montana Book Festival. Uh, basically, I guess we're pretty much at the tail end of all the uploads of the uh, Montana Book Festival. So you guys can get the full 2023 Montana Book Festival available online through MCAT's YouTube page at MCAT TV Missoula. All right, let's jump right in. Some other stuff that are happening this weekend. We got the new Wonka movie that's coming out this weekend. I'm going to be talking all about exactly what you can expect, particularly from this movie. I'm assuming they're going to take a lot of liberties from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory in the weird uh, Johnny Depp kind of version. Uh, yet another attempt to give an origin story to a beloved character whose weird inventions make him the toast of the chocolate world. We have the director of the Paddington movies, uh, which teaches children how to be polite and respectful. Mm, good lessons, mm, good lessons. Uh, even in the darkest of circumstances. Uh, Join teen heartthrob and basic male protagonist antagonist uh, Timothy T Chalamet uh, teaming up with a diverse group of people to show the corporate chocolate people in his journey to make candy. And I'm assuming there is a great betrayal followed by a cathartic ending where it rains candy and chocolate and all the bad guys are just like, you know, which chocolate's not that bad? And then also Hugh Grant plays a horrific uh, CGI Oompa Loompa because they didn't want to hire... Um, Little people. All right, moving on. Control. Remember the, uh, the 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 movie, the phone booth. This is literally what this movie is. It's but it's in, a, in an AI uh, powered car. So phone booth is the movie that had Colin uh, Farrell in it, and also uh, um, God, what, Kiefer Sutherland as the voice of the sniper who basically kept him in, in the phone booth. But since there are no more phone booths in life, they're they're going to throw it over to a, a self driving car, and the person in the uh, vehicle has to go along for the ride. Oh, they die, or someone they love to die. It, I I don't know. It's something that's like they're being extorted to basically drive vehicular homicide people. The story is similar as a person involved is. Uh, redeemable but a hard sell in these kind of movies because it's essentially teaching a sociopath to be less of a sociopath by even a bigger sociopath and that's kind of what these movies are anyways we have uh, concrete utopia uh, this is a korean made movie that you probably won't see in theaters unfortunately because um, it'll probably be right to your streaming but korean films don't pull any punches these kind of films show a group of people as they have to deal with new reality after massive earthquake in seoul south korea uh, this is kind of post-apocalyptic kind of area in which they have to uh, um, hold off on the last building and survive. And even then, it's hard to keep up with supplies. Watch as the worst and best of humanity challenges your biases, but overall ignores the characters as this mainly sticks to putting too many plots in the story and you being like, uh, is he supposed to be the good guy or something? But, oh, okay. Oh, okay. And so, you know, uh, and I, I've seen a lot of Korean kind of movies lately, just, you know, Squid Game, you know, all that craze and stuff like that. There seems to always be this idea of a, of a father figure who is reluctant to be a father, so just kind of like a failing dad, and he has to go the extra mile uh, after the fact that a lot of people along the way died to get to where he is. And so that's his reasoning to becoming the hero of the story is essentially that a lot of his friends have to die for him to man up, to be a father. And then sometimes he dies in the movie and sometimes he doesn't. And usually if it's Korean uh, movies. I think 80% of the time the father dies and then the other 20% he lives and becomes a better father to his child and uh, becomes a better person. And then there's always some kind of tease for more story going on forward because it, it, yeah it, I've never seen a fully I never never I've never actually seen a Korean movie that just kind of like ends it kind of feels like it's always leading to a sequel so anyways those are uh, your movies that are coming out this week and up next we have dub and stuff from a another series of movies that seemed to never end back in the 60s and um, it's called Hercules and the Tyrants of Babylon and it is from the 1965 movie uh, so without further 64 sorry and without further ado here's this with dub and stuff uh, so I do delts, quads, quads again, then some delts, mm, I biceps, think I get it. curls, triceps, Yes, I get pushes. it. Please stop talking. We have a certain rule in our kingdom. No shirt, no service. We are a shorts or tunic wearing. Wow. Sorry about that, boss. Mm. We are shorts and tunic wearing. We like to show legs. We do not like to skip leg day. For the rest of our bodies, we cover them up, unlike yourself. You looking so handsome with your chiseled jaw, with a slight little butt at the end of it, but still. No, don't look at him. Look at me when I'm trying to talk to you. I'm trying to tell you that we aren't necessarily down for the biceps or the uh, chest skulls that you have on your chest protruding with pure muscle. Oh. I didn't mean to offend 
You are an outsider. You no doubt belong in this kingdom. You do not belong here. But... Promise to wear a shirt. Please. I will do so. Yes, sir. We have the new uniforms we want to show off. Mmm. Black. Very thinning. I like the shorts. See what they're wearing? You must wear the same thing that they are wearing. Mmm. Looks pretty good. Plus, I got a cool little hat out of it. What do you think about the hat? It's pretty neat. I was the one who did the hat. Yeah, it looks nice. Follow these men to the changing chambers. Oh, thank you very much. Hmm. Come on, guys. Let's get some free clothes. Uh, how do we get as big as you? Huh, you know, eat a lot, work out more. Hmm, it even seems the men love him. I would hate to see what the ladies think as soon as they put their eyes on that guy. Perhaps we could... Oh, maybe my gender-specific bathroom would help. Or we could be like the Greeks and the Spartans where they just used women for breeding. Hmm, well, maybe if we get a couple more dozen men that look exactly like him, we would totally do that, but... We probably shouldn't do that. It feels like discrimination of some kind if we separate the men and the women. Hmm, as long as we cover him up, we won't have to worry about him. Ah, oh, nonsense. As soon as he puts on a shirt that's too tight for him, which is most shirts, every woman will be swooning from here to Athens. Oh, and, uh, Lord knows if I introduce him to our king, that our king would be swooning. He's that kind of king, by the way, if you're paying attention to what I'm saying. Hmm. Ah, I think I have an idea. It's a new invention called... Pants. Welcome back. And so the lead actor, Peter, Peter Lupus, has betrayed Hercules quite a bunch of times for sure. He's still alive today, too. He was born in 1932. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I always thought it was pretty interesting because he would often have his uh, um, love interest be his wife in a lot of those movies. Even, like, if the love interest or the wife of Hercules dies, his love interest, who's like a femme fatale, but only Hercules has the power to make her an honest woman. And so that was usually his wife who he'd end up with in every movie, regardless of whether the love interest uh, that he had in the beginning. So it was interesting kind of seeing some of those tidbits uh, of behind the scenes stuff, because that's even more ridiculous than the actual movies if you watch them, just because they pumped these out just as much as they pumped out um, movies like uh, The Three Stooges. So these were this was kind of like the Roman uh, cowboys and all that kind of stuff of the era, which everyone was obsessed with, and they uh, pumped these out like crazy. Like, you know, they had all the sets and designs. I'm, I'm assuming even some of those costumes might have been used in uh, Spartacus and all those big budget movies where they're just like, Let's Let's see about, uh, you know, covering some of the costs and recouping some of the costs for uh, some of the uh, set designs for some of the stuff. It's like, oh, why don't we just uh, make a, a Hercules? I'm like, yeah, yeah, Hercules, he's, he's like a superhero. It's like, cool, whatever. And then they do it. All right, so moving on, we're going to talk about some stuff uh, happening in uh, for events. If you're interested in going out and about in the city of Missoula, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. Those are everything that's happening in the city of Missoula. And, you know, figuring out things, not to mention, you know, you can educate yourself through all, a lot of different means. They have a uh, a lot of classes, they do a lot of uh, uh, shows, uh, governments type stuff, uh, just a lot of postings to let people know what's going on here in the city of Missoula. But at the same time, it's a consortium of people telling MissoulaEvents.net they are not a journalistic endeavor that t uh, finds out what events are going on and spread the information. It is up to us, the people, to fill in the gaps of MissoulaEvents.net. So if you're interested in doing a lot of indoor fun stuff during the winter uh, break, uh, like I always say, YMCA Roots, Acker Sports Center, and Mismo Gymnastics are uh, the indoor uh, kind of gyms for families and kids to be able to have that kind of fun with their families as well. And don't forget about the Valentine Center across the, from the recycling plant Pacific. Uh, they also host indoor soccer and dodgeball tournaments during the peaks of winter and beyond. Uh, Missoula Food Bank meal distribution, emergency food services are available for anyone and everyone and getting food is free and simple and convenient at 1720 Wyoming Street. They do not ask for identification, proof of income, or proof of being laid off from a job. Uh, they will not ask you uh, about your previous customer of the food bank and they will not turn anyone away. Food is a basic human right and anyone who uh, and everyone are welcome to go through the doors for emergency food for you and your family. 
10 a.m. every Friday. It is uh, equal parts food center, uh, education, uh, and library. And they have all sorts of cool stuff, and not to mention they have a demonstration kitchen on the, uh, on the floor up above in which I've taken class there, and it's fun. Uh, Tiny Tales and Storytime, Santa is planning on stopping by the uh, library uh, uh, this weekend, Friday and Saturday around 10.30 a.m. Get a read book with Santa and also uh, maybe get some gingerbread cookies or uh, make some nice arts and crafts for the holiday season. Um, they also is lunch services at the Pavarella Center starting at 11.30 a.m. This is an ongoing thing. This is a regular thing at the Pavarella Center. Uh, lunch at the Missoula Senior Center. This is a weekday thing at the Missoula Senior Center. It's $5 for seniors, $8 for general public, so you don't need to be a senior to go to these things. And, you know, sometimes who doesn't want to go, go to lunch at the Missoula Senior Center and then crush it at cribbage? Just saying. Yarns and watercolor starting at 12 noon today. Watercolor and uh, yarns is a, a wonderful uh, opportunity for people to get their hands dirty and you know, make knit and crochet their scarf uh, last minute gift for the winter uh, holiday season. And this is going to be on the fourth floor of the Missoula Public Library. And uh, also at the Public Library every uh, Friday at 2.30 p.m. Lego Club on the second floor for young kids who just want to play with Legos. Boom. Um, ugly Sweater Party at Cranky Sam. Um, it's going to start at 5 p.m. They also have a 7 p.m. Um, um, performance or something like that. Actually, no. What am I looking at? Okay. Never mind. Moving on. It's Cranky Sam Public, uh, Cranky Sam Public House is having an ugly sweater party. I always try to look for ugly sweater parties because it's always fun to do. And it starts at 7 p.m. at Cranky Sam. Um, Parent Leadership Training Institute, PLTI. Uh, it's a deadline for today at, at, 6, p at 6 p.m. Missoula County par uh, Parent Leadership is a free 10-week anti-racist civics and leadership course that empowers parents and caregivers to become leading advocates for their children. They offer individualized ca and child care support, on-site meals during weekly classes, and transportation assistance. And, this is gonna, and the deadline is 6 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library. And you can inquire by uh, asking the librarian about that. John Floridas, Trio Holiday Benefit Concert. He's going to kick things off at Imagination Brewing Company at 6 p.m. tonight. And he's, he usually does these holiday concerts to help fund fundraise for a lot of church groups and donations and all sorts of things things to benefit our community. And so he's been a long staple of the uh, Missoula music scene. He does a lot of open mic stuff. Uh, he does a lot of solo stuff, but he occasionally works with this trio to help uh, these kind of things as well. And he, uh, and he usually has a performance he puts on on um, New Year's Eve for the uh, Missoula on Main, which is an updated name for uh, First Night. Um, ugly Sweater Skate, so if you're done with the Cranky Stand Public House um, Ugly Sweater, you can bring your ugly sweaters down to Glacier Ice Strength starting at 6 p.m. Um, Andrea Floyd, uh, live, Andre Floyd at Ten Spoon Winery is going to be playing some blues music starting at 6 p.m. Uh, Five Valley Chorus is going to be at the Southgate Mall. Last week, I missed out on the Tuba Christmas, so you guys get a chance to watch a choir at Southgate Mall, st Southgate Mall starting at 6.30 p.m. TJ Missoula at the Wilma is going to be performing some comedy, and their name is TJ Missoula, so you know it's good. Uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer last week and tonight. Um, um, so last weekend, and I want you to also know that tonight and Sunday are sold out. I double-checked the MCT schedule because I wanted to go, but uh, they, last time I checked, there's some room for Saturdays. Um, but as far as tonight, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is a movie that many people have watched and a story many people have already known. But this is a MCT uh, Missoula Community Theater play that's going to be playing through the holidays, and this is your last weekend to check it, it out um, if you can get tickets. Um, Jingle Bell Rock Bottom is going to be uh, hosting uh, an original theater production at the Zouk. This is another weekend that they've been doing. I talked about a little bit last week. And so this is going to be at the Zouk starting at 7.30 p.m. And finally, Cash for Junkers is going to be at the Rustic Hut playing some country music. And I've never heard of the Rustic Hut, uh, so you might have to check out where that is. Um, but as we get into our Saturday, we're doing the, they're doing the uh, Missoula Valley uh, is doing a bird count for the holidays. And it's called the uh, Missoula Christmas Bird Count. And it's going to be happening on Saturday, December 16th. The uh, uh, count is a circle with a 7.5 mile radius centered on the intersection of Reserve and I-90. The uh, area within the circle will be covered by a small group of individuals. This area will be assigned ahead of the count day. You can participate by joining the group of, uh, in the field or by being a feeder watcher. So that's going to be happening at Missoula Valley, and that's where they're going to be meeting up at 8 a.m. on Saturday. Missoula Valley Winter Market at the Southgate Mall every Saturday at 9 a.m. It's a wonderful way for people who still have the farmer's market bug and they want to uh, 
uh, get that uh, scratch itched. Um, Homeward is also doing financial skill building class. They do these kind of classes to help people uh, with uh, financial burdens and help uh, kind of uh, fix up their uh, uh, portfolio moving forward. And they also do a wonderful uh, let's buy a home kind of uh, thing in which they award grants to people for ho first time home buyers. Special story time with Santa. In case you missed fr uh, Friday's uh, uh, story time is doing it at the Missoula Public, Public Library at 1030 on Saturday as well as a museum tour at the Missoula Art Museum starting at 11 a.m. with the Teen Open Studio at 1230 p.m. later that uh, afternoon. Von Common Studios Art Bazaar is going to be hosted at the Missoula Public Library featuring uh, art by Lady Pajama, Jesse Smith, Michelle Ernest, um, Serpentine Designs and more. They will listen to Hat Radio DJing and selling handmade records. Um, enjoy a uh, tasty hot beverage and snack bar to warm up the winter uh, weather while you, uh, while you shop. Von Common Studios is a nonprofit collective art studio and has been providing affordable art studio spaces and creating community events like the Artist Bazaar uh, since 2010. All right. So we're not even getting to uh, um, um, lunchtime on Saturday, and the Clay City of Missoula is doing a kid's workshop, uh, Pinch Pot Animals. So if you're interested in uh, having your kid doing some clay uh, at the clay studio, uh, 12 noon on Saturday, Western Montana Genealogical Society Workday. If you're interested in learning about your uh, family tree, Missoula Public Library hosts it every, uh, every once in a while on the Saturday at 12 noon on the fourth floor. Holiday with the Herd, River Pines Horse Sanctuary, from 12 to 3 p.m. Covers up below the fire and hot cocoa and say hello to the sweet herd. Snap some photos with the photo booth with horses, minis, ponies, and of course, the beloved donkey. River Pines Horse Sanctuary will be hosting this starting at 12 and it goes to about 3 p.m. It is a lot of these kind of events that are happening f for the big part of the day. Family ice skating at Glacier Ice Rink starting at 12.30 on Saturday. They also MCAT Saturday drop-ins at 1 p.m. This is an opportunity for kids to come and uh, learn a little bit more about broadcast television while at the same time learning to create stop animated uh, uh, stories much like uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer with the Rankin and Bass uh, animated movies. Um, cookie decorating and crafts with Santa on the second floor of the Missoula Public Li Library. If you uh, miss the story time they're also doing the cookie decorating this uh, uh, Saturday afternoon for that. 12th annual holiday swing jazz concert and fundraiser at the Wilma Theater starting at 5 p.m. on Saturday. Jake Swank is going to be playing some folk music at, uh, wait, nope. Okay, Money Penny is going to be at DraftWorks uh, uh, Brewery and is going to be playing blues music. Um, John Floridas Trio Benefit Concert is doing their second night at the Confluence Center. Uh, Shine Missoula Holiday Mixer at 7 p.m. Plans for the Montana's largest activation coming November 2024. Join us for Music Sounds by DJ Sarah Pierce. Drinks Holiday Activations uh, and more tickets are limited and that's going to uh and then also jingle bell rock bottom again this is the musical parody and sketch comedy at the zach um missoula folklore society contra dance they do this every saturday at 8 p.m um at the um elks lodge um dueling pianos with josh former and kyle curtis at Stephen hoop on uh, 8 p.m solid state karaoke at west side uh, LA, uh, west side lanes and fun center dj chris moon every saturday at the battle at 10 p.m Jaden Decker, Top Hat, playing country music. And then as we're going into uh, <coughs> some Sunday stuff, Montana Natural History Center is doing their own bird watching club for December at 9 a.m. on Sunday. Dance Wonder is going to be at Westside Theater. It is all about contemporary dances and just letting people just go out and do some dancing and help benefit the Westside Theater. Uh, breakfast and Pony Rides with Santa at the Carousel. So Carousel of Missoula is, invites you to join for us for the Carousel Rides, light breakfast, snacks, and a magical visit with Santa on December 7th. 17th from 9 to 10.30 a.m. Admission is $5 for participants ages 5 and up. Create a fun holiday memory at the carousel. Um, downtown carriage rides. Downtown Missoula starting at, at 12 noon on Sunday and pretty much going on throughout most of the afternoon. Uh, carriage rides in the downtown Missoula area. So if you have a, uh, a nice uh, a brunch date with somebody you wanted to take a nice carriage ride, why not do that in the downtown Missoula? Look for the horse-drawn carriage in the downtown area. You can't miss it. It's usually off of Pine Street next to the Missoula Art Museum. A service of lessons and carols, UCC. So if you're interested in going to the uh, university's uh, church, Congregational Church, they have some classical music and service of lessons and carols happening at 3 p.m. on Sunday. 
Dulce Canto is going to be uh, at the UM Recital Hall, aka the Music Building at the uh, University of Montana. They'll be uh, performing uh, emphasis as Hope and Love. Dulce Canto offers musical sections that will inspire you and fill your heart with the holidays, and they hope you can join them for their choir concert. <laughs> And then finally, John Floridis, since he's doing his trio, I wanted to mention this as well. It's going to be wrapping up his uh, three-night benefit concert at United Methodist Church at 7 p.m. on a Sunday. So without further ado, we're going to dive right into some of the things that are happening in the news today. And we're going to kick things off what's happening uh, here in the city of Missoula. And so <coughs> there was an accident just on, on the way to East Missoula with a collision that left three injured. Um, Weather says uh, that it will stay into the mid to low 30s this week with a chance of 40 degree temps coming into the weekend. The three injured were, uh, were just injured and will not have not sustained any kind of life threatening injuries. And so this is just one of those reminders that we're in it for the winter season. And no matter how confident we are uh, driving during the winter, don't ever feel like you're too confident. You always want to be defensive. Just drive safely out there, folks. Um, Missoula County loaned uh, $750,000 for Western Montana Mental Health, and that's big news coming out of uh, <coughs> the last couple of years. What was once reliance on Montana state dollars saw a major cut over the last legislation session, resulting in decade, decades-long after-school program flagship come to an end. Officials with the Western Montana Mental Health Center approached the county last week asking for financial support to help organizations shore up the funding as it waits for state's new Medicaid reimbursement rates to take into effect. This money will go towards keeping places like Warm Springs running and staffed up while other offices in Kalispell like the River Walk Mental uh, uh, Service here in Missoula that offers 16 beds for uh, folks suffering from mental health issues and cannot get along in the homeless system a place. It's also going to be opening up shop in Kalispell for those uh, same kind of services moving forward. <clears throat> Missoula County received funding through the American Rescue Pl uh, Plan Act, and a portion of this was earmarked for mental health. Uh, the county was looking to uh, disperse the funding in fiscal year 25 and 26, but on Tuesday it agreed to establish a revolving loan fund now, which providers can use if needed. Mental health has become a main staple in many communities that have dealt with the pandemic, stay indoors orders that increase the issues amongst those in need. Nearly 50,000 people in the U.S. have lost their lives to suicide last year, according to new provisions tally from the National Center for Health Statistics. Uh, men aged 75 and older has the highest suicide rate at nearly 44 per 100,000 people, double the rate of the people aged 15 to 24. America is going through hard times and systems in place are not meeting people where they are. Mobile crisis units in the Missoula have been important to help those suffering from mental health episodes and wellness checks to have been um, instrumental in tackling issues that face at face value. But deeper solutions require much more work with by the individual to seek help. It is important to note that 988 is a suicide hotline and don't ever feel like you need to be on the edge to call them. It's just another tool for your mental health support system because pretending that you're fine for so long is just that, pretend. Here's something that recently just happened as well. Um, this is something that kind of really just grind, grinds my gears. And it's kind of crazy. It's just something that just kind of gets glossed over and just kind of forgotten about and is... Um, as of Monday this week, migrants will not be separated from their families by, because they illegally crossed the border to, from Mexico. So how did Americans get to this point? I don't really understand this whole border security thing, but when you start separating children from their families, you get some really messed up system where these kids will be forever scarred. And since 2019, mind you, families have been separated through this executive order by Trump administration and many talking points and the against the administration f from the Dems at the time were because of these very issues. And yet when Biden took office, nothing changed, nothing happened. It literally take a lawsuit to get to this point for federal judges to overturn this, uh, this uh, practice of separating families. So uh, more than 5,000 5, families crossing the U.S.-Mexican border were separated with no plan of reunification. Images of children alone in detention facilities generated outrage. The youngest child separated from their families was only six months old at the time. This basically had to go through the legal system to solve a problem that was essentially at the whim of the administration that frankly should have never taken uh, the wheel, taking their hand off the wheel on the matter. By criminalizing the illegal crossings, we have essentially created an internment camp in the modern era, and it's hard to dispute this uh, the further we get into the Biden administration that could have easily undone what was done as an executive order. So 
it's pretty messed up that like the American system has separated families in this, and it all it, it basically went into effect on December 11th. And part of the settlement was reparations for the families, but there will not be any reparations or money to the families. Uh, officials ended those negotiations back in 2021 after Republican lawmakers expressed outrage, saying that amounts under the Constitution were too high, and it does speculate uh, stipulate that the U.S. government will continue to pay to help reunify these families. So, so another big move by the U.S. was the fact that the uh, U.N. wanted to enact Article 99, and the U.S. was like, nope. And this had to do a lot with the Hamas-Israeli war. A majority of the U.N. Uh, Council voted in favor of a ceasefire, with the U.S. vetoing it and the U.K. abstaining from voting. So it was like a 13 to 1 vote, and yet it still didn't get passed, which kind of shows you that the U.S. has a lot more to say in the U.N. than we actually give it credit for. So it's not hard to see the public opinion doesn't really like this whole war in Gaza, and as more and more people are struggling to survive on top of the situation that has resulted in further deaths. Um, <clears throat> You know, also Tuesday, uh, President Joe Biden caved to a lot of the international pressures and began blasting Prime Minister of Israel. He said uh, long ago, Bibi, I don't agree with the damn thing he, he, you have to say. Uh, this time, the president added to his retelling of the story, this remains to be the case, end quote. The fundraiser was part of a gathering of Jewish donors, uh, many of whom attended a White House Hanukkah reception Monday evening. Uh, uh, asked Biden comments, a senior Hamas official said that in Beirut that the, quote, the resistance and the steadfastness of the Palestinian people have made Biden understand that the Israeli military operation is a crazy act, end quote. And of course, many of the retorts coming from the uh, folks uh, was a, of uh, World War II, in which the bombing of civilians in Dresden, Germany. Part of Biden's remarks referred to the war in Iraq and, other, and our response to 9-11, which caused more damage in the Middle East than it even solved after, uh, and not to mention, you know, one of the things that it kind of holds uh, true to Biden's heart is the fact that his son was uh, exposed to toxic burn pits while he was deployed in Iraq and later developed cancer and died. So the bad administration position that it does not want to see Israel reoccupy Gaza or further shrink its already small territory. They are moving closer and closer to the concept of a two-state solution in which Israel has basically not really acknowledged nor have they have any interest in even floating the idea of a two-state solution. In a massive vote of the UN, Ge UN General Assembly, so this is like most nations that are part of the UN, a majority of 153 nations voted for a ceasefire in the General Assembly, 10 voted against, and 23 abstained. So last reports from the, uh, from the Israeli military forces say this conflict will go on for months regardless of the international pressures for a ceasefire. This has gone on for suggesting a ceasefire f to demanding one in this assembly that has seen the U.S. become more and more isolated from the wider world that is geared towards peace. So. <clears throat> It's kind of crazy. Um, and, you know, one thing is as we're moving forward and collaborating work with other countries is um, it kind of harkens back to, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia's interest in, um, you know, going forward with a lot of these green initiatives. And a lot of people being like, wait a minute, you're the uh, proprietor of all these fossil fuels. You shouldn't be a part of this. And like, let them let them talk. Let them be a part of this because they have just as much to gain from moving forward with the climate change and climate solutions and stuff like this. And in 2015, world leaders agreed to limit warming um, to below 2 degrees Celsius and ideally uh, below 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to the pre-industrial time. Scientists say that the warming above 1.5 degrees Celsius would be global food systems at risk, spell the end of most of the world's coral reefs, and potentially trigger climate tipping points like melting of permafrost, which could accelerate warming regardless of the human actions. You see that... Uh, trillion tons of uh, iceberg that just detached itself from the north. It's, it's getting crazy up there for sure. Since then, warming has reached 1.2 degrees Celsius and record temperatures with the uh, Canadian wildfires being a major fire last season has led many leaders to buckle under the reality of the situation. One of the biggest breakthroughs of the COP28 is that the, for the first time, millions of dollars will be directed to developing countries that are already suffering damages of climate change. This also harkens back to the lawsuit that the EU that is holding countries accountable for not meeting their carbon goals. Um, all this can also trace back to Montana. Uh, if we could pat ourselves on the back for the successful win for those kids up in Helena for not upholding our state's constitution for a clean and livable environment. 
At Climate Talks a year ago, nations agreed to establish a new loss and damage fund. Now, more than $700 million have been announced for it, most from European countries and 100, 100, million, 100 million coming from the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia specifically. Their money is from fossil fuel and they also live in one of the hottest places on earth. They've been uh, using modern technology and other means to keep temperatures down, going so far as to research ways to influence the weather. Uh, that's how dry Saudi Arabia is. <coughs> so those are some of the news things that are happening in the world and, and around today. And I, I made perfect time today, so I wanted to thank you guys for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and uh, take care.